filler, fluff, padding, I've had a handful of questions on what makes it good and what makes it bad. And like every question on creativity, there's really no real answer to that question. Filler isn't inherently good or bad. It's neutral. Your job as a writer is to understand its purpose and use it effect. So when is it a good time to add filler? What does filler do? So filler, it increases the size of your story, it slows the plot, and it can relax your reader. The flip side is that it can dilute your story, interrupt the flow, undercut tension, and meander. Filler is typically something that appears in serialized fiction and episodic fiction, most notably in television. This is often where it gets its bad name, too. When I think of filler, it, I think of it a bit as a sliding scale, because plotty filler does exist, usually in the form of like a self-contained story, but filler can also occur as a scene without any plot motion involved. Either form serves at the same function, relaxing off a large plot, adding size, slowing the story. You may be quick to think that a enclosed plot arc is better than no plot at all, there's more action packed in, it's less likely to frustrate the reader, but you, you've probably also been annoyed by a non sequitur of an episode in the middle of your favorite show, even if it did have its own self-contained plot. The kind of filler isn't the issue that's there. The issues are the context and the quality of the filler. Here's some guidelines for creating filler in the right place. So first and foremost, do not undercut tension of the major plot. If things are ramping up for something big, it is not the time for your characters to go to the beach. This kind of includes emotional tension as well. If there is a big emotional arc going on, they're not going to go off and hunt rabbits. You know, it's do not undercut that tension with filler. Instead, use filler as a bridge between tensions, between arcs almost. Prolonging that relaxed feeling after a win helps accentuate that feeling. And when you go and crush all the happiness and hope and joy, it's way more powerful than if it was tension, tension, tension even more tension. So use filler as a way to create some relief and, you know, zig when people expect you to zag. So next let's focus on how to make filler not boring. In some ways, it's a lot like other scenes. Like, in fact, most ways, it's just like ever, every other scene you're going to write. Um, since there's no plot progression, you need to pay attention to the other elements a lot more, a lot heavier, and even if there is plot progression, it's going to be a minor plot. So you need to focus on your character and your setting. Those are two major, major aspects of creating an engaging scene. The sections of, in sections of filler, it's important to pay attention to the setting. I mean, like, it's always important to pay attention, but it's really important to pay attention to your setting especially when you're working on a comic when it's visual. And especially in filler where everything is kind of working against you, you need to make your setting good. So explore a new fascinating vista. It's a great way to chill out and sneak in a bit of filler while your audience is distracted by all the pretty mountains, all the pretty trees, all the beautiful hellfire, you know? Another way is through the use of character. Give your characters a task that needs to be performed. It doesn't have to be a mind-altering, amazing task. It can be something simple. When you have great characters, readers will love and enjoy seeing them do fun new things, even if that thing is not progressing the plot in a significant way. Just make something interesting. And a filler scene can be a self-contained story with very few stakes, and it still counts as a story. You can have a one-page exchange of catch which has a plot arc. It's possible, it's doable, and it's filler, and it's love. Like, in the end, filler isn't really that different from a regular scene. It's pretty hard to draw the line when I think about it, especially when you're thinking about non-episodic content. 
no moment is completely detached from your plot. Even a filler episode is attached to your plot in some way. Um, exploring your world and characters gives them context. Heroes mulling about um, advances their growth one moment at a time. Your filler is not detached and you need to remember that. It does contribute something to your story and it does contribute something to your plot even if what it's contributing is a bit of um, time away from it. And if you're filler is bad and no one's liking it you need to tailor it in a way it might not be the issue it might not be because it is filler it might be improperly placed or it might not be what people are looking for it, it might not be interesting it might you just might have written something boring and you need to reconsider character or setting those are good directions to go in and just don't overthink it don't feel bad about slowing things down from time to time it's just another tool in your tool belt and one little side note is i brought up a thing called a reactive scene um i forget when i did it but there's active scenes and there's reactive scenes and i want to tell you that a reactive scene is not filler reactive scenes are important moments of the plot where people where your characters soak in information it's very much connected to the previous event where i believe a filler scene is less necessary it's less plot integral um your reactive scenes where let's say um big scary bad guy attacks and then afterwards we discuss and um try and um quantify what just happened that is an important moment it is not filler it can lead into filler after that as sort of a bridge moment which i was discussing before but your reactive scenes are on the cusp of filler but they're very important and they shouldn't be neglected. But yeah, what is filler in the end anyways? It's just kind of like a label you can put on certain scenes and plots and the like. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for anyone who stopped by this weekend, last weekend at uh, Fan Expo. That was hell. That was a very long convention. Oh my god. I always forget that the Thursday goes to like 9 o'clock at night and then they expect you to wake up at like 8.30 in the morning and be there fresh and chipper and then do it twice after that. Holy heck. <laughs> but thanks for anyone who stopped by. And if you didn't stop by, that's cool. I'm busy putting all of our button designs onto our TickTales store. And then I'm going to add the um, Magpie books. And if you're in the Toronto area and you missed Fan Expo or you thought, heck, that's a big price tag, I think um, some of our books are going to be in the Glad Day bookshop. It's like um, a queer bookshop. So even if you're not after my books, maybe go there. Thanks so much for watching. I don't even know how to end these. It's been like how many episodes? I don't freaking know.